In this section, we'll look at the external factors that can affect your period, as well as how your response to those factors might differ depending on the phase of the cycle that you're in. We'll take a closer look at each phase and create a plan or a strategy for the follicular phase in part five, the ovulation phase in part six, the luteal phase in part seven, and for the menstrual phase in part eight. This is session number five, creating your stress relief and action plan. So when you're creating your stress relief plan, remember that stress comes from change and survival is always going to take precedence over reproduction. So the first thing you'll want to do when you want to reduce stress is to change your environment. Secondly, you can find the time and the space to do something that requires little to no force. I talk about no time in the first session and I mentioned it again in a video, Periods and the Pandemic, on YouTube. And then I came across an article that was published March 9th, 2021 on entrepreneur.com. And then it was also carried in Inc.com. It's in and around the internet. And the writer talks about Steve Jobs and Albert Einstein both taking no time, or what they called non-time. I had never heard anyone define no time before that, so I was pleasantly surprised to learn that my methods were in line with those of the most innovative names in history. Now, no time can be the best time for your self-care routine. For example, you can put on a mud mask and soak your feet while you're doing some meditation or self-reflecting. No matter what you choose to include in your plan, because it is your plan, you're going to make it your own. Just make self-care a part of your stress relief plan and include stress relief in your action plan. No two people will have the same plan because this plan is made for you, it's made for your cycle, and it's made by you. But no matter what that plan is, the goal remains the same, and that is to create a sustainable stress relief plan that you can use during any phase of your cycle. Something that's sustainable, that you can use during any stressful moment. So for that, I would say avoid using things like drugs, alcohol, or food as a form of stress relief. They may dull some of the stress for a time, but it's not sustainable and it will end up putting even more stress on your body, on your mind, and on your spirit. So we're going to look for other ways and other things to include in that plan. And I'll be discussing that, how to create your self-care routine in depth in part eight of the series. Now let's look at the action plan and the types of action you can take to avoid stress altogether. This is session number six, creating your communication and social strategy. How you choose to communicate, who you choose to communicate with, and the methods that you use to communicate are all going to change depending on what phase of your cycle you're in. For example, during ovulation, you tend to want to socialize and communicate a lot more. And then during the menstrual phase, we tend to want to communicate and socialize a lot less, in person at least. Truly cyclical living, meaning scheduling your life events around your menstrual cycle is ideal. And that is the aim of this entire coaching session is to help you to be able to do that as best you can. But it's not always going to be realistic. Why? Because of course the world doesn't revolve around you and your menstrual cycle. And you are going to have to take other people's schedules into consideration. And so that's why it's important to have a social and communication strategy incorporated into your holistic menstrual care routine. That way you'll be able to communicate effectively and appropriately in any situation and with anyone, no matter what phase of your cycle you're in. So the whole purpose of this session is to help you to create the perfect communication and social strategy so that you're able to communicate like you're ovulating even when you're in your menstrual period.
And so, like I had mentioned before, use your follicular phase strategy when you're feeling out of control. Situations where you're in a new place, in a new job, or even if you're at work and you're in your menstrual phase, this should be your go-to strategy. When you're feeling out of control, be a little bit more reserved, use the power to remain silent, think things through, limit your communication to um, text if possible. So in that sense, you can kind of mix your menstrual and your follicular phase strategy. And you'll want to do that mix and match wherever necessary. Use the ovulation phase strategy for exciting and new situations. So if you are in a new situation, for example, and you're in a luteal phase, you scheduled or had to schedule an event that's more of a group event or you're in a large group and you have to meet new people, then go to your ovulation strategy. You'll still have somewhat of the energy in you. You won't be as down as you might be during your menstrual phase, but if you really do have to push through it, just more think of yourself as if you're ovulating. Now, is faking it till you make it and putting on a fake smile always going to be beneficial to you? No, you may not even be able to pull it off. So in that case, go to your follicular phase, phase strategy. I find that the follicular phase strategy is always the go-to. When in doubt, exercise the power to remain silent and to remain reserved while remembering that you do absolutely always have the right to speak. Use the luteal phase strategy when planning or organizing. You've probably heard it before that you shouldn't share your ideas until you've completed them or you don't want to say what you're doing before you've even taken first steps to get to what you want to do. And so in that case, you do want to limit your communication, not so much as you would if you were menstruating, but in those cases, when you're planning or organizing, maybe you would want to share it with someone close to you, with a family member or with a loved one or with people who you feel like you would get real support from. So in that case, when you're planning or when you're organizing an event and you want to communicate about it, think maybe you should communicate with people who are closer to you. So go to the luteal phase strategy for that. And finally, during the menstrual phase, when you are stressed out or under pressure. Now, we know we'll go to the follicular phase strategy in that case, but let's say there's a work event or any type of event where you have to be present, but you are on your period, the date is already set for the event, and you must be there. What do you do in that situation? Well, you'll have to mix it up a lot in that case and take from every strategy. This is session number seven, creating your organization and creativity schedule. This plan was created specifically for the luteal phase, but like any other plan in My Sacred Blood Strategy for Cyclical Living, you can apply this plan as necessary during any phase of your cycle. But the luteal phase is that phase during the menstrual cycle where everything from your libido to your metabolism to your moods seem as if they're getting out of control. And that's because the thing that controls all of those things, that regulates those things is progesterone. And progesterone starts to fall at around this time. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder and hysteria and even PMS is said to occur during the later half of the luteal phase. So today we are going to create an organization schedule, a creativity schedule to help you to better manage your moods and better manage your time during this phase of your cycle. Let's begin with you time. And this block of time is going to be at the beginning of the luteal phase during the ovulation phase. We're going to want to break up that phase, the luteal phase, into five. 
because the phase is about 15 days long, we want to make it on average about five days for each of these blocks of time. So once again, we'll start with you time, which is time spent on doing things that contribute to your material growth and your professional and your personal development. During the next portion of the luteal phase, we're going to give that time to you or to me. We're going to call that me time. And me time is the time spent doing things that contribute to your personal growth and your self-development. And finally, during the later half of the luteal phase, we're going to give those last few days to no time. And this is time spent on visualizing or conceptualizing ideas that will become the things that contribute to your personal, professional, and spiritual growth and well-being. This is session number eight, creating your self-care routine. Now that we finally arrived at the final phase of the menstrual cycle, which is of course the menstrual phase, we're ready to start creating our self-care routine. Now, ideally, the menstrual phase should be the most peaceful, relaxing, restful phase of the menstrual cycle. That's if you've prioritized your period right and you've timed or scheduled your events to align with your menstrual cycle. Now, if timing isn't exactly on your side or if your schedule just happens to be a lot more supercharged than you expected it to be during this phase, then your self-care routine is still going to be beneficial at this time, especially at this time. So let's begin building a self-care routine that is effective and versatile and that you'll be able to use during any phase of your cycle and under any circumstance. As you know, the menstrual phase is the final phase in the reproductive cycle or in the menstrual cycle. And this is a time for the reproductive system reset. Holistic menstrual care and cyclical living is all about getting everything on the outside to align with what's happening on the inside. So if your reproductive system is in the process of cleansing itself and preparing itself for the start of something new, then you should be doing the same when doing self-care from the inside out, the important thing to remember is to get your mind right, to declutter and to prioritize. So just as the lining of your uterus is starting to shed, you should be doing the same. You should be shedding some of the things that you don't need. And that's what it means to declutter and prioritize. Sometimes it's necessary to hold on in order to let go. And what does that mean? So I want you to picture yourself hanging on to two precious things that are dangling off the side of a cliff or dangling off somewhere high up above. And you have to save one of those things. You have to choose, you have to prioritize. Now, in order to really get a good grip on the thing that you really, really want to hold on to, then you're going to have to hold on tight to that thing. And when you hold on to that thing, you're going to have to let the other one go. So this is kind of like choosing what's more important to you. So you'll want to hold on tighter to the things that you really, really want in your life in order to let go of the things that you don't. Again, by looking at our body and how our body works, everything starts out gradually. We don't just start gushing blood. So the blood will start gradually and then it will gradually taper off over a period of five days or so. So you'll want to do the same thing. You can slowly let things go just like the blood flows. Take your time and do things gradually during your menstrual cycle. Just get your mind slowly, gradually used to rest. Sometimes it's hard to just calm down and just relax, especially coming off of a busy work week or busy work day or just a charge, supercharged schedule. And so sometimes you do find yourself having to ease into relaxation. Funny enough, you kind of have to calm down in order to relax. So start gradually, uh, gradually do something, maybe sit and then lay down and then take a nap and so on. Finally, you're going to start planning the next month's schedule. During your period, it's a great time to take time. We've talked about no time where you take that time 
to think things through, to conceptualize and to make plans. So you'll do a lot of writing, a lot of journaling, or not a lot, but just as much as you need. But you'll take this time to write, to journal, to get your notes in order, to get your mind and your ideas in order and so on. This is especially a great time to set your block of time. So you, the next month's period, now that you know what the first day of your period is, the first day of bleeding is the best time to then note what may possibly be your next period. 